Akwaba. This is Diplomatic License on City TV. My name is Apioko. Now today we're doing something extremely special. Since the year of return in 2019, and indeed before that, several people have made a trip, an exodus, back to the motherland, and even more specifically to Ghana. In the past couple of weeks, we've experienced what perhaps I would term as the most iconic visit yet, seeing two survivors of the Tulsa massacre in the United States of America, which happened in 1921, also known as the Black Wall Street Massacre in Greenwood, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Two survivors of that massacre, Mother Viola, or Mother Viola Fletcher, and her brother, Uncle Red, have come to Ghana. Mother Viola is 107 years old, and her brother, Uncle Red, is 100 years old. These two centenarians have made the trip of a lifetime. They lived through the times when black Americans were now beginning to integrate into society in America. They lived through the times of racial violence, including that of the Tulsa massacre. And for the first time in their lives, they're visiting the lands of their ancestors. And no better place to do that than Ghana. So we'll be speaking to a few people. One, the lady who brought them here and made this trip possible. And of course, Ambassador Erica Bennett, who's no stranger to the show and who's the ambassador of the Diaspora Africa Forum in Accra. But before that, let's just take a look at all the wonderful things that have happened throughout their journey in Ghana. This wonderful, beautiful time that I'm sure they'll forever, forever, forever cherish in their hearts. Welcome to Diplomatic License. Let's see what happens. So if I may start, I'd like to call to the podium to welcome us Her Excellency Am Ambassador Eric, Dr. Erica Bennett, who is our head of mission at the only African diaspora embassy in the world, Dr. Bennett, Ambassador Bennett. Good morning. Good morning. And this indeed is a fabulous morning. I am just so honored to be here this morning in the presence of Queen Mother Fletcher, who has graced us with her, her presence. You talk about grace. You talk about strength. You talk about resilience. This is a woman who has all of it. And we're just so proud that you would come to Ghana and be with us. And I just really want to personally say to, to Ike, your grandson, he loves you. He is taking very good care of you. And we thank you for bringing her, bringing her to Ghana. All of you press, we want you to tell the real story. We want you to talk about Mother Fletcher. We want you to talk about Uncle Red. We want you to talk about the strength and the resilience that they have. And you know their story. So their story has been told over and over and over. So we want to take it forward. The Diaspora Africa Forum, we were just so delighted when my sister called and said, would you host them on ground? There was nothing we could say but yes. And we called Dr. Nadia Musa. We called GTA, 
We call the Ghana Investment Promotion. We called our agencies here, and they jumped to supporting this effort. So I want to publicly say thank you to you because she was with us from the very beginning. And I'll tell you a secret when somebody else comes. But I just really want to say thank you. You know, when you get overwhelmed, all you can do is say Madasi. Madasi, Madasi, Madasi. And it is Madasi. And everybody with a grateful heart, we need to be so filled that these two elders came across 10,000 miles, 11 hours, going back tomorrow night to visit us and to bring us love. They say we did something for them, but they really did something for us. Let's give them another hand as much as we can. Uh, Ambassador Bennett talked about our, her daughter, my niece, who is also the deputy director of the Office of, in, of Diasporan Affairs in the Office of the President. And this is an indication how important that the president feels that the diaspora is to have an office in his own office. So if we could ask Dr. Musa to come and just give us greetings for just a moment or two, that would be great. Um, it's a pleasure again to be here to express our gratitude as um, the strength that Mother Fletcher and Uncle Red, who I have now found a new lover, um, to come to Ghana to visit us and to show us that there's no limit to age and that once you set up your mind to do something, you should go for it. And this is why I am here to again thank you for your visit to the presidency yesterday and to assure you that yes, we are all one and that the president of Ghana is forever ready to have you home as he told you yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> For Chief Red, walking, walking, walking. Wait, wait, he got. <laughs> no, y'all can do better than that. Some of us couldn't get up this morning walking. Let's have some African noise. Come on, some African noise. Some African noise. Uncle Red is 100 years old. Okay. Obviously, I had to come back. My boyfriend is in the room, so. I need to do justice to that. Good morning. Um, I had a special announcement that I kept away because we we're still waiting for Uncle Ray to come in. So yesterday, during the visit with the president, the president offered them citizenship, Ghanaian citizenship. And yes, they accepted the citizenship. So now the plan and goal is since they're going back tomorrow, we will not be able to officially complete the ceremony. So the plan is some of us as a government, we will go over there and do a presentation to them. And as we do in the Ghanaian culture, when you have a visitor and they come to your home and they visit you, you return the visit. So this is what we'll be doing. Thank you very much. I, be, I, we have another greeting from the Ghana Tourist Associate uh, Authority. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to represent Ghana Tourism Authority. So on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Ghana Tourism Authority, um, the Office of Diaspora Affairs, and all protocols observed for anybody who I have missed, and especially the Diaspora Africa Forum for what you've done to put this together, to bring these two icons to Ghana. Mother Fletcher, Uncle Red, the two of you have completely inspired me. Um, what you said just a couple minutes ago about we can't get out of bed, I woke up this morning and feeling like, oh, I'm so tired, my knees, my back, then I was like, but you saw Uncle Red at 100 years old dancing just a couple of days ago. So I, I had to just push myself up. You, you two have really, truly inspired me. And congratulations on becoming Ghanaian citizens. I'll keep this short. I just want to end off by saying this is truly a full circle moment. When we think about what has happened 
in history hundreds of years ago, people being taken away and displaced. And over 400 years later, people coming back, coming back to explore the continent, explore their roots, learn the history, heritage, culture, and connect with people. And then the people here also connecting with you and learning about your story, learning about what's happened. And I think that this is the beginning of building bridges today that will last for generations to come. So thank you so much. And Ike, you're doing a great job being a support for your grandmother and your uncle. So it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. We've had 13 events, is that right? In six days, 13. And they have not missed a moment. In fact, the other day, you're speaking about the dancing with Uncle Red. When I was dancing with Uncle Red, I was getting tired. And so I was not saying I was tired. I said to Uncle Red, oh, Uncle Red, would you like to sit down for a moment? He said, I still got wind. <laughs> so there is a TikTok, please look. We have a TikTok on Uncle Red dancing. And we are trying to get 10 million views. I figure if people can watch a chicken dance, they can surely watch a 100-year-old man dance. So if I can have the video played. In the streets, for the first time, we have our own social media platforms dedicated to uplifting and educating our people. It's not just about fun and games. No longer do you have to worry about being censored for speaking the truth. It's our platform as a people, and we make the rules. Our Black Truth is the name of the new platform that is 100% Black owned and operated with servers in more than 150 cities worldwide. Just like Black Wall Street, Our Black Truth is a place where Black people can open businesses. It's a place where you can make money for the content you post and the comments you make. It's a place where the dollar can circulate among the Black community multiple times. It's a place where content that is not uplifting, educational, informative, or fun is not tolerated. We're raising the standard. Our Black Truth is the future of Black social media. Help us to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the destruction of Black Wall Street by downloading the Our Black Truth app at Google Play or the App Store, or visit us online at ourblacktruth.com. This is such an exciting time that even our engineers are dancing. And they can't dance. Our Black Truth. Join the movement today. And so it gives me a singular honor to bring up the founder, creator, and chairman of Our Black Truth, Mr. Michael Thompson. Thank you for coming out here today. And as you saw, Our Black Truth is our platform. It's owned by people that look like all of us in here. One of the things that we need to do that is critically important is for us to unite as a people, those of the diaspora and those here on the continent. We need to come together as one. We need to do for self so that we can move forward in the future and create a world that's pleasing and that protects our children. We have to continuously work to achieve greater things because we achieved greater things in the past. So I'm asking everyone in here to please support Our Black Truth by downloading the app as you saw on Google Play and the App Store. And if you have skills, bring them to bear. Just step out here and take a chance because again, we need to do for ourselves in every aspect. And again, unite with one another because there are no differences between us of the diaspora and those here on the continent. So I just want to say thank you again. And, and, and what did Uncle Red say? We are one. We are one. Thank you so much, Michael. Now um, we'd like to see if we can get a few words. Ike first, can we hear a little bit from you? Good morning. First, I would like to acknowledge my first cousins, Mali and Muriel. So uh, they, they helped me do everything that I do. I call them on the phone and said, we need to be in Philadelphia in, in 20 minutes. And they'll be there in 22 minutes, but they'll show up. So we need to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma in two days. They'll be there in, in two days. 
we need to be in Alaska, they might question me on that one, but they, they really helped me out a lot. The way this works, the way the spirit of Black Wall Street, Black Wall Street was an um, amazing place to be, but the spirit of Black Wall Street lives in you. And this is why we need to connect our African brothers and sisters across the pond with those here in Africa. The way it worked in Black Wall Street, you could work all day from sun up to sundown, and you might work for a chicken farmer, but you would bring home eggs. You can work all day from sun up to sundown. You may work for a uh, wheat guy on somebody's farm, but you bring home some wheat. She might process sugar cane. She may milk cows all day. But when you came back home to Black Wall Street, this man gave his eggs, she gave her wheat, and that woman made pies. When she made pies, they bought the pies. They traded pies, they traded eggs, they traded milk. And when they started businesses, they uplifted each other and they supported each other. And when this lady made a lot of money, she loaned money back to the egg guy to buy his own chickens. And now he had chickens instead of collecting eggs, he was making eggs every day. So the spirit of Black Wall Street is within everyone. It's a matter of connecting resources and people and people understanding how it works. So you have to trust somebody, you have to take a leap of faith, but the spirit of Black Wall Street can be duplicated anywhere in the world, but it takes cooperation and understanding, and we can do it just like Black Wall Street with our people. We have a platform to do that, our black truth. So please download the app, reach out to us. I know I can count 17 investors that I have to report back to when I get back to the United States. And their bank accounts are a lot bigger than mine. So it's important to reach out so we can improve life here on this continent. Thank you very much. Well, it's thankful to be here. And I appreciate, I want to give thanks to everyone that will be able to come again. Thank you to Dr. Luck. Dr. Luck had drove it to the top. That's what we want to do. Go. We are one. I'm here to represent all of us as one. I don't have a few words, but that's the main thing. This is this. I'm one. We're one. And Dr. Look, all the workers here in Apple and everybody, I love them. I honor you. I appreciate you. You've done the best job. That's what we need to do. Keep going up. Let people know who you are. Let them know we are one. We are one. On behalf of the Ellis family from Denver, Colorado, we thank you all. We love you all. We appreciate you all. We are totally, highly blessed and favored to be here. This has been a magnificent, one-in-a-lifetime experience. We want to promote unity. As my dad says, we are one. So, again, we should support each other. And hopefully all of the countries of Africa will come together on our black truth again to talk about, uh, share, spread ideas for um, economic growth all over the world for African Americans. So we really hope that you will help to do that by spreading the word. And Ike has said it better than anyone that I know as far as the unity that we need to develop amongst each other based on our ancestors and all that they have gone through in the past. So we want to make sure that we carry that through to the future for our uh, children that are yet to come and for all of our, for all of African-American humanity, for the betterment of all of us in the world, for economic prosperity and growth and love for each and every one. Thank you. 
going to have about eight minutes of questions to the table. So please, if you have a question. My question is to either Uncle Red or Mother Fletcher, whoever wants to answer. What has been your favorite part of being in Ghana? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And that's it. Yes. One more question. Yes, yeah. Kenya? Uh, there's a mic behind you. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Good morning. My name is Kenya Uhu, and I do travel with you all. Thank you so very much for having me with the family. Um, and I want to say thank you to you all for having us here in Ghana. Um, in the spirit of Black Wall Street, um, I know that people uh, in America who are focused on building um, the economy and building and establishing ourselves in America, in a country that we built. Um, and so there's a great deal, deal of fear um, around coming home to Africa, whether it be Ghana or another country. And this has been a wonderful experience. Um, and so I'm wondering if you have any words for people who are more interested in continuing the fight and building our own, you know, whether it be Black Wall Street or something else, or standing up to uh, the fear of coming home and being welcomed or fear of being exploited again and so forth. So um, is there something that you can speak to that? Thank you, Kenya, for that question, because we get that question all the time. The Diaspora Africa Forum is, as we said from the beginning, the first and only diplomatic mission. Our role is to support the continental Africans as well as the historical Africans. Those of us from slavery, we're considered the historical Africans. Those Nigerians, Ghanaians who go outside, they're considered the continental diasporas. So our role at the mission is to begin to look at how we bridge that. Uh, those that want to come to Africa, we get hundreds and hundreds of inquiries every day. They can either, we're going to have a press kit that we're going to give you, and it's going to talk about how you can contact us. But we, at the mission, we take our role as to make sure you come with a safe landing. You know, we help you talk about buying land. We help you talk about getting citizenship. So the Diaspora Africa Forum, that's your embassy in Africa that will help you specifically here in Ghana. We represent all 55 African countries, but our headquarters is here in Ghana. Ghana is really the most pan-African country, you see, and everybody knows that. I think it's in your DNA. You can't help yourself, but open up. Uh, we also have the, um, the African free trade, um, someone I think, Ike was talking about that, and that's one of the, the initiatives that the AU has started, where we begin to do trade among ourselves and not rely on China and other countries to trade and to help us produce our own things here in Africa. And that headquarters is based here in Ghana as well. Thank you. We misjudge them. Because we were thinking, we, we, we didn't misjudge them for us. We misjudged them for all the people around the world. From Denmark, I got comments. From Germany. How are you going to take a 107-year-old lady and 100? Are they going to break? Can they move? Can they walk? Can they talk? Can they hear? I'm like, yes. And so each time that I got this pressure, I called mother to just double check. You know, like double check. And the last time she, it was... I never double checked again because she said, yes, Dr. Luck, firmly. And you all know when elder people say one word, there's like two sentences. I'm going and don't ask me again. And to prove that, Mother Fletcher had to be hospitalized for four days. First time in her life she's ever been in the hospital. Even having her children, you know, because of segregation, she was in the basement of a hospital. Uncle Red had to go to the hospital for 24 hours just to check something. So when he comes out of the hospital, he calls. He says, sis, are we still going to Africa? And sis says, I'm going to Af The only way I don't go to Africa is if I'm in a coffin. So, and here she is today. 
around, let's say, now we need to make some noise. This is where you make some noise. <laughs> so, so that was Tuesday. Did I forget anything else on Tuesday? I know we time is short. We're coming. Tuesday was it? Okay. Wednesday, we went to Nigeria, hosted by the Ambassador King of the Ibu people. They were crowned Queen Mother Chief and Chief, which was amazing and just amazing. And then after that, we were done that day, right? That was the day. And then yesterday was amazing. We did something else on Wednesday? Oh, forgot. okay. Tuesday night, we were at Judge Julia's, again being created by the, uh, the King of Osu, who bequeathed them again with names. I, it's so many events. See, she remembers better than me. Mother, you keep telling me what we did. <laughs> Because she's shaking her head. All right, and then Wednesday, so Thursday, yesterday, we were at GTA, right? Is that where we were? G for, the government, for the Ghana tourism. Yes, okay. One of the buildings, and they were given Osu names. Everyone was given Osu names, which was just memorable. All of it, you can kind of go and just Google something. So then we went to Asmara for dinner. That was Wednesday, right? Okay, and lunch, well lunch, dinner, because it ended up being dinner because he danced almost to the whole night. So you're gonna see lots of TikToks of him dancing. And then yesterday was the crowning for us. We were received at Jubilee House by His Excellency President Akufuado. And so Nana Akufuado. And that was just great. The words, the, everything was great. They received amazing gifts from His Excellency and the best gift, as Dr. Musa said, was they were offered to be citizens of Ghana, and they said yes. All right. I want to add my voice to the multitude who have expressed sincere appreciation for you choosing Ghana over the 54 other countries. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah, Diaspora Network Television. What we stand for is what has turned out to be the name of this tour, and if you don't mind with permission, I'd like to characterize it as the We Are One Tour of Ghana. If that is accurate. Yes. Because, don't mind. because when you first stuck your hand, Uncle Red, and said We Are One at the Diaspora Africa Forum, it touched me. And because of what DNT stands for, I'm curious, I wanted to know, where did you get that oneness from? Because you said it with such conviction. Thank you. I want him to give my team and also I told him, we are one. I got, I got to give him the idea that we are one. That's what I told the president of the United States. We stand high. Don't ever think you can't give up that. You can go high. I got that idea from the, uh, when I hit Charles Hill from Charles Hill. And I, I didn't want to come to that for years. I didn't think I could make it, but I... La Palm has been their palace. They have received us as if this was their palace. And I hope they treated you like the queen and the chief. So we're going to give La Palm a big round of applause. So again, thank you all for coming. Media, I want to see some good stories, some good news stories. And before we hang up, I just want to, all of us. See, I tell her what to do. I'm the senior, senior sister. Um, so I really want to say thank you so much to the media. We really want to hear and read some good news stories because we created good news stories here. Uncle Red and Mother Fletcher created good news stories. So that's what we want you to see. So thank you so much for coming and Madasi and have a great, great day. Let's stand up and give everybody a big round of applause.
Welcome back. This is still Diplomatic License right here on City TV. My name is Apioko. And now it's time to speak to two. Look, it's always great to be in the presence of great black women. Always. And I have two mothers here with me. I have Ambassador Dr. Erica Bennett, who is no stranger to this show. And she is the ambassador of the Diaspora Africa Forum, an embassy that has been set up in case you've been living under a rock to make sure that all things I mean, that are related to the diaspora are coming together so that our brothers and sisters in the diaspora can make sure that their homes are secured on the motherland. We also have Dr. Tony Luck. She's the COO of Our Black Truth, a social media platform um, that, you know, I mean, it, look, it's for us, for people of color. And I'm going to be asking her more about it and she'll tell you, you know, what it is and the importance of having such a platform. Hello, ladies. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for agreeing to speak to me. Yes. How now, could we not look at you? <laughs> Thank you, beautiful Mama. and Thank you, Mama. so wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Now, the two of you have been very busy. I mean, you brought uh, two very important people from the U.S. to Ghana in the persons of Mother Viola Fletcher and her brother, Uncle Red. And these are two survivors of the 1921 Tulsa massacre, the Black Wall Street massacre. And I mean, a lot of people, unfortunately, don't even know that something of this magnitude happened, that a flourishing black community in Oklahoma in 1921, the Greenwood District, was deliberately wiped out because people couldn't handle the fact that black people who had been slaves were prosperous and doing well for themselves. So I, I want us to talk a little bit about this and I'll start with you, um, Dr. Tony. How did we end up here? How did this big trip happen? Because it couldn't have been easy. Well, I just wanna <laughs> add two titles to uh, my name. I'm the ambassador's sister. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and- um, I was gonna let that be the surprise oh, at the end. At the end. No, <laughs> see, we've been doing this all the time. Yeah. And I am so blessed to have been able to work with her mm. in co-founding DAF. It was her vision for many mm. years. We created a company called The Bridge, mm. and she's always been thinking, while we all were trying to stay African-American, she was in Africa, <laughs> dressing Africa. In fact, yesterday we were with uh, Mario, uh, mm. Uncle Red's daughter, and she said, when, uh, she, I said, well, sometime I'll wear American, well, I can't wear any American clothes around her. <laughs> Western she will allow she you forbids to. it, except, you know, I go to breakfast. But I said, I, in 35 years or more, I've never seen her in any garb except African mm -hmm. culture. Uh, she, she, I got her a nice little sweatsuit once, and she wore the little sweatsuit. She used to throw it off, she had a sweatsuit. And I mean, that, we haven't seen that since. It's probably, <laughs> it's under somewhere. Um, we are, you mentioned Our Black Truth, which yes. is a new social media platform. Mm -hmm created by Michael Thompson and Eric Thompson. And we were invited to um, be at the 100th year commemoration of the Black Wall Street Massacre mm -hmm. in on July, on May 31st to June 1st mm -hmm. in Tulsa. And while Michael was there, he met this, the, the three elders. Mm -hmm. And he also met the grandson of Mother Fletcher, Mr. Ike Howard. And they got along well, they talked, they took pictures. It was lovely, that was the end of it. And when he got back to Washington, we were in the middle of a board meeting, and he gets a call from Mr. Howard saying, Granny wants to go to Africa. Like, so Michael has no connection to Africa. <laughs> I mean, it's spiritual from the very beginning. Michael has no connection with Africa, he never been, been to Africa. Africa. He's never He's been never to been Africa. He's never been here? No, 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 oh, no, wow. no. And so oh. of all the people they met, and there were a few people in Tulsa who were African-centered, yeah. but he called Michael. So we just know that it was just the grace of God and the, and the wisdom of God. And I'm sitting there and Michael says, well, you know, Dr. Luck, my uh, COO and, and board member, is, uh, lives in Africa, been there more than 30 years, blah. And so I got on the phone with him and he says, Granny wants to see pyramids <laughs> and animals. I said, okay. Well, the pyramids in, in Egypt, that's not very good to go right now, plus, dead pharaohs yeah i want to show you live kings. A lot, yeah. Yeah, life so, kings yes thank you and um <laughs> and the animals the kind of animals they're thinking the big five is mm. in southern africa mm. and right at the rim of eastern africa very far in my mind and so 
So those two quickly off my table. I said, the only place you can come is Ghana. We have an embassy in Ghana. We have a relationship with the government of Ghana. Uh, we, Ghana is the place to go. So after that, I called Ambassador. I said, this, I tell her the story. This is what happened. And I said, I want to bring you to Ghana. And with no hesitation whatsoever, as soon as I said 107, because, you know, she's trying to be Mother Fletcher's favorite granddaughter. <laughs> And I tell her, I am the favorite granddaughter. I knew her first. Isn't it? <laughs> you knew she her don't first. Care. She don't care. <laughs> uh, and so she, without hesitation, I called her. And then I called Lady Rosa over at Action Chapel. And I said, you know. Lady Rosa Whitaker. La right. Lady Rosa Whitaker. Uh, Duncan Williams, actually, the whole name. And she said, absolutely. So I got them both on a little call and said, what do you guys think? And uh, they said, absolutely. And before I knew it, they had gone to work mm. on their side, putting together this amazing program. And, and that's how we, we came. And so we took care of everything on the ground in America. It was a lot of things to do, medical issues, and making sure they were fined, and tickets, and visas, and all that. But then they arranged a lot of the stuff, visas and stuff on the ground. And then we got here, it was all fabulously done. So that's how we got here. I, that if that's not a spiritual story, I don't know what is. You know, it, it, it had to happen, and it was ordained that way. That's I what I'll so. say. But I just want to add one point to that. The most compelling thing for me was when I um, sis sent me her testimony in Congress, and she talked about how every day of her life she sees black men being shot and her house being burnt down. And she said that's a memory that she never will forget. At that point, the first thing both of us said was, we will change that memory. We will give her some good memories. Before, and they call it... Wings, taking wings. Yeah, they call it, uh, her grandson call it when they transition, <laughs> they're taking wings. So our whole thing was, we wanted her to have some good memories before she takes her wings. And it has just been phenomenal, just phenomenal. The kind of support that we've gotten from everyone. And the everywhere. The kind of gifts that they've gotten so far. And then the culmination was when the president offered them citizenship yeah. and they accepted. Okay, so, so, so now they'll be citizens of Ghana? Yes, Love it. yes. <laughs> and they're coming Love it. in during UNGA in, uh, in September to confer because we didn't have time. They didn't have time to do the big ceremony. Yeah. So they're coming to America to, to, to finish the process. their wow. citizenship wow. on them. Wow. And and it's just it's just that was the just crowning. I mean, we were, we've been everywhere to Ambassador, just the job she has done and her team on ground yeah. is phenomenal. It's really not worth because <clears throat> on Tuesday we had a ambassador lunch. She brought Africa to them. So we have 16 African nations to come and be represented and bring gifts. Then on Wednesday morning, then Wednesday, well, that at night we were at Asmara for okay. lunch. Oh, which so you was have another, the whole Ghanaian spread? The whole Ghanaian oh, spread. Oh, the spread was on the floor. And they saw the spread before they sat down. What and, was their favorite and, food? Everything. everything. Oh, no, both of them can eat. <laughs> you can't even believe it. Then Uncle Red danced. They can eat, too. They can eat. Wow. You're gonna see TikToks of Uncle Red dancing. <laughs> he didn't stop dancing. But then on Wednesday morning, we went to Nigeria. Mm. What? We went to Nigeria. We went, tell, we went tell to Nigeria. About not literally. Ambassador. Went to, not literally. The, um, the Igbo king here, you know, he's been here for many Ten years. years now, almost 12 years. And uh, his palace, they hosted them. And they made them, they made her a queen mother and made him a chief. Mm. And you know my Nigerians now. Oh, they yeah. know how to They'll do it. They show up. Whoa. They, oh, they oh, show and up they and show, up show, and show out. out. <laughs> they Absolutely. show out with the grass men, the ten, 10 feet grass men, <laughs> the women all in the same outfits. Uh, we went to Nigeria. So, and that's how, they, that's, <laughs> that's how we introduced her. We said, we're taking you to Nigeria now. And then Mother Fletcher said, we really did go to Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they did. Yeah, I'm they, sure did. they did. They did. And then when you mention about the Black Wall Street, just to circle back, we also went to Osu Dungeon. Okay. And uh, they couldn't go down into the dungeon because of the size and the mm -hmm. wheelchairs. But I gave them the history at the door. And the one thing Uncle Red said, 
was to me, he said, Dr. Luck, who would do this? And I said, the same people who burnt 1,250 houses in a whole town in 1921. And we still are sorry for them as much as we are for us because who would do this? That's the question always with all of these issues that we've encountered as being people of African descent. Who would do this? And, 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 and the next question is why? So he's asked, he's been just tremendous Uncle Red <clears throat> in his vocalization of what this whole trip means. And then he's given us a mantra, which I'm sure Ambassador is gonna tell you. We are one. We are one. We yes. are one. And are one. he's been saying that all over. Every place he goes, he says, we are one. Yeah. And he talks about when President Biden came, you know, he went to Tulsa and also the, this, the, uh, the vice president? No, culture? no, they, yeah, he they went. met, she met them when they gave the testimony in, 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 on May 19th. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Our Congress, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. But he went there when they made, um, t they, was, they were doing a commemoration of the 100 year. Mm -hmm. And then the President Biden did go there and he met them. And uh, he said he told him, we are one. And so that, that has really stuck, and that's been a mantra that he's been saying over and over mm -hmm. and over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We are one. You know, and we are one. We are. Mm -hmm. You see, those of us anywhere in the world, if you are an African, you're part of our clan. We're all yes. one clan. Yes, absolutely. And we are one. Yeah. And the blood that yeah. keeps us is stronger than the water that separated us mm. across the water, mm -hmm. across the Atlantic. The blood that keeps us is stronger than the, the water, water that, that separated, separated us. us. Yes. Yeah. So Ambassador, let me talk to you about the Diaspora Africa Forum's role in all of this. And how important was it for you and, and in your tenure to do something like this, to make sure that something like this was materialized? Well, this is just one of the events that we've done, but I really must say it's the most important, you know, and it's certainly the most rewarding for, for us. Um, Sis has been, she helped me found this, this mission. We support the mission ourselves with our retirement money, with our, you know, she makes, she goes out and make the money. Are you serious? Oh, no, yeah, serious. yeah. No, we don't take government what? money. We don't take uh, Africa Union uh -huh. money. Uh -huh. You know, we, we have maintained it ourselves for the past 15, 15 years. years. But one of the things is that we're shifting that now because we understand that we have to institutionalize it. Mm. And we can't just depend on our personalities and our resources. So we now are doing business things through DAF, and we can, because DAF is a diplomatic mission, but it is unlike any other mission. You know, we don't get visa money, we don't get anything like that. So we are allowed to be creative in terms of our funding. So that's one of the things that we are doing now, is looking at business opportunities. This is a business guru over here. She, I can tell. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> she knows how to make the money. So she has some projects that she's working on right now that will really be able to solidify us for years to come. Okay. And because we don't want to work it on my personality or her personality, mm -hmm. we really want it to be institutionalized. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things. And then we have the Sankofa wall. Mm -hmm. The Sankofa wall is a wall, you know, as you know, Sankofa means come back to your roots. Mm -hmm. We have some legends on that, on that wall. Mm -hmm. We have Bob Marley, we have Harriet Tubman, we have Rosa Parks, we have John Lewis. Those are larger than life legends. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Winnie we Mandela. have Winnie Mandela. And, uh, and we, we put George Floyd's name on there. And then Breonna Taylor, Breonna Taylor. we recently put her name there as well. I mean, those two have respected <coughs> conversation about making sure that we put institutional racism to sleep. Those two, so. They are legends. No. So we're really excited about what we're doing at DAF. We really, really are. We have a program called Junior Ambassadors where mm -hmm. we take young people all over the world and expose them. We have another program. We have a football team that we've <laughs> sent. Um, we've sent 25 young men from Ghana to Europe and to America. Oh, that's brilliant. And <coughs> 10 of them got scholarships. <coughs> 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Out of the 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you're doing a lot of work. We're trying to. Try no. Try no. Yeah, try no. But yeah, do it well, though. Well, the, the idea well. of doing the work is um, based on doing the work, you know. And um, <clears throat> we, we, we have a corporate policy that we, you know, promise less and deliver more. So, mm-hmm. so we, because we, we know other people in other situations, <clears throat> excuse me, can come in. But we, 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 do, we do because our heart, you know, is, is the love of, of Africa. And so whatever, whatever way we can do it, we do it. And Ambassador's been very instrumental at the AU. We've been blessed to have very, very good relationships with many, many, many heads of state. And uh, we've, we've used our, our ability to share things with various leaders, to, to get them in a mindset. Even the sixth region was something right. that Ambassador actually is the one. You know, now is years now, so people sometimes forget the nexus. So I'm always trying to remind people that it was she who whispered in the ear of a president to say, President Wad, and he was in charge of the AU at the time, don't, don't forget the diaspora. There's a sixth region. Even the word sixth region was mined by her. So, uh, and then it took off, and then uh, I was exiled into Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> to push it inside to where we got it. And then our DAF, we got official recognition by the African Union. DAF is an officially recognized, only of its kind, embassy for the diaspora in the world, recognized by the African Union. It has to be. And let me just remind our viewers, and for those of you who are hearing it for the first time, the sixth region of Africa is the diaspora. So you've got the south, you've got the north, you've got the west, you've got the east, you've got central, but we have the diaspora. <coughs> And it's an important region because, look, I mean, hundreds of years ago, some of our ancestors were taken away against their will mm-hmm. to other parts of the world, away from the African continent. Mm-hmm. So we've got South Africa, we've got West, we've got East, we've got the North, and we've got Central. But there's also the diaspora. Over 400 years ago, some of our ancestors were taken away from the shores of the motherland against their will. And you don't expect that after all this time, they are to come back here and just fit in and pick up where they left off. So it's important to make them comfortable and that's why the sixth region is important. We have DAF to make sure that that, that assimilation happens the way it has to. Yeah. One of the yeah. things that I want to say, and I've been saying this all over, because I really want people to understand who the diasporians mm-hmm. are. One is the historical diaspora. Mm-hmm. We are considered the historical diaspora, those of us taken from slavery. You are a continental diaspora. Mm -hmm. Continental diasporans are Nigerians, Ghanaians, those who leave Africa for work, study, or greener Mm -hmm. pastures. And if you ask me what was the greatest accomplishment of DAF, is that now we have the heads of states to understand the importance of using the diaspora. We bring resources, we bring skills, we bring talent, talent, that kind of thing. So now they are all talking. I was sitting in a meeting with them, and I was so proud when I heard them talking about the role the diasporics can play. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I think that Ghana has done so very, very well, is that they've opened arms Mm -hmm. to those of us in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Both levels, because remember 2018, they they invited Mm -hmm. Ghana. Year of return. DAF was, no, no, 2018 was the year of return. Of, of return for for Ghanaians that DAF was instrumental in. Mm-hmm. Then 2019 19. was the year of return. Which was all of the diaspora, everyone else. Yeah, that's right. a good point. Yeah, yeah but we but true. we were impressed at the number of Ghanaians who were outside who were invited home to talk to Ghana about their involvement in Ghana. You know, because the numbers are staggering. Mm-hmm. The hundreds of doctors that are outside, the hundreds of teachers that are outside, the hundreds of lawyers that are outside. And so uh, President Ado uh, invited those, the Ghanaian diasporans, to come from all over the world. And they, even someone came from China, someone came oh, from Japan, Russia, everywhere. some came they're from everywhere. Japan. Ghanaians, we were you know, so surprised. She, she we were so surprised I mean, because... I mean, there's, there's yes. an association of Ghanaians in Antarctica. When I heard that, Antarctica, I was, can you imagine? <laughs> so he invited them all back, and DAF was very instrumental 
in helping with that along with um, Dr. Musa. And then the next time, with the discussion kept expanding, again, we, we're very proud of our ambassador for being a catalyst to ha push this envelope and then 2019 was the year of return. Over almost a million visas were issued. Uh, and then, you know, then we, we're ready for beyond the beyond return. The return. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I do want to say, and I want to say that definitely to your listening audiences, is that one of the concerns that we do have is that we don't want our local Ghanaians to see us as a cash cow. Mm -hmm. We really want an openness and a really, you are my brother and my sister, mm -hmm. and we want you to come home. Definitely. You see, the money and all of that will follow, yeah. but that sentiment of really opening up, and that's one of the things about Ghanaians. Ghanaians, I mean, it's in your DNA uh, to be very hospitable and to yes. be very warm and very kind uh, and accepting of, of people. Mm -hmm. That is in your DNA. Yeah. And that goes back to We Are One, right? Yeah, Absolutely. it goes back to We Are One. We are one Absolutely. You know? So we're going to wrap up this conversation soon, but I just want us to revisit the, the, the conversation that's brought us here, mm -hmm. the Tulsa massacre, mm -hmm. and of course, the two centenarians, our mother and our, our, our grandmother and our grandfather. Absolutely. Yes, who are here finally mm -hmm. for the first time in, mm -hmm. on, on African soil. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until 1996 that the U.S. government officially opened mm -hmm. uh, some kind of a, um, what do they call it, a commission. A commission yes. to yes. deal with exactly, it. Yes. to deal with it. Yes. I mean, that's far too long, mm -hmm. took way too long. But what do you think we need to do on our end as Africans to make sure that the stories of our ancestors, things like the Tulsa massacre, mm -hmm. um, things like, of course, we know the story of slavery, but a lot mm -hmm. of us don't know what actually happened on those plantations. A lot of us don't know why yeah. Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, and all these names yeah. you hear are important. What do you think we need to do on our end to make sure that our children, and our grandchildren, mm -hmm. also imbibe this history and that it is told mm -hmm. so that we make sure that it doesn't happen again? Well, we have a company called the African Communications Agency. And that's what our, our mission is, is to tell our stories. <coughs> and I think that's why it's so important for our black truth, that platform that can ha have us really begin to tell our stories the way that we, should we tell see it. Authentic, yeah. yes. You see, authentic. because so long everybody's been telling our stories mm -hmm. but us. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And 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 I th I think George Floyd was an interesting uh, project that the ambassador undertook. Because what it said to America is we're watching. Mm. It yes. said to America, yeah. Africa is watching. watching. We took a basically obscure man, black men are dying every day in the streets of America, and elevated him so that people would pay attention. And that, that is on the wall. And we did a big ceremony. It wasn't like... Yeah. It was a big, big deal. It was covered all over it. the world. She saw and it. then our and morning clothing, and everything, yeah. morning everything. Clothing. And then our ceremony was the only thing beside the funeral program that was showed at his funeral. And so I think what, what we're saying and what that did and what Diaspora Africa Forum does is say to America, we are watching how you're treating Africa's children that you took and stole. We are watching. You're not going to be able to just continue to do anything you want. It's not okay. And just to buttress what she's saying, too, we had over 20 African presidents to respond to that. You know, either they sent letters to the president in the U.S. or they called the American ambassadors to their offices. And, you know, so... You know, we were very involved in that process, mm -hmm. and it really, mm -hmm. I was so proud of, them. of how Africa responded to that. Mm -hmm. And that's not a small deal because mm -hmm. this Western culture always carries a big stick. Absolutely. So our presidents up here to four yeah. have, you know, tried to yeah. be, be overly diplomatic. Overly, di overly diplomatic yes. to the, and I would call that equal timid. Yeah. She's a diplomat. This yeah. is diplomatic. <laughs> Me, I'm a, you know. So, so. You see it? <laughs> Say it as it is. Yes. But it was true. And so DAP did that. And it empowered them to feel empowered, 
to actually say, this is not okay. This was not okay. And what, what, what is America doing about this? But so, so DAF is putting a spotlight on this connection and letting the powers that be all over the world, the UK, Europe, wherever, that we are, we are watching what is happening to Africa's sons and daughters. And of abroad, course, it also abroad. made the average African realize that, look, I have brothers, I have sisters yeah. who are I mean, first generation <coughs> living in America too. Yeah. And just because of the color of their skin, they could, they could be, be the next exactly Joshua. right. They could be the next Brianna Taylor. Well, exactly. But by the grace of God, yeah. it could Absolutely. be any of us. It yes. could be any of us, right? right? So I'm happy that that connection because it wasn't always like that. Exactly. It, it's Africans and then African Americans. <coughs> yes. But we are one. Yeah. We are one, we are as one. Uncle yeah. Red said. We are, we are definitely one. We are one. Well, we want to thank you for having so us so. on your show. Yeah. Um, you know, th this show is a fantastic show. I watch it all the time. Mm. And as your <laughs> producer said, I'm going to come one day very soon Yay. and let it be my show. Yay. <laughs> yeah, we need you. We need very we just soon. need to follow you, all the things you're doing. Mm. The world needs to know. Yeah. The world needs yeah. to know. Well, I'm I'm an open. I've been instructed to definitely make myself yeah. available. Yeah, yes. and I will. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna watch. Uh, yeah, yeah. she'll be watching. I'm committing <laughs> her to that because this is this is a great show, and and really not because she's my sister, but watching her, she is a consummate diplomat. She's a consummate diplomat. When we started this 15 years ago, th there was no di no argument about the division of labor. Mm -hmm. For, because I don't have any of those skills <laughs> at all. In yes, fact, I know I, I have very little of them. Yeah. And um, and I I mean, but she's from the time we kids. She's just cultivated this nice tone and this ability to figure things out. And I see, see that, no, let's no that no, nah, we not do no nah, <laughs> no. And she'll say, sis. Now let's think about how that can be done, said diplomatically, how do it, and how we can get that done. And I'd be like with my bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we can get it done. But again, oh. we really want to say thank you yes, so, much so much. And to You're your so producers beautiful. and thank all you. of that thing in your team. We and look really how beautiful want to say she thank is. You. You're so thank beautiful. You. Thank yeah. you both. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. Thank you, Dr. Luck. You're welcome. And like I said in the beginning, it's always great to be in the presence of great black women. Thank always. you so much. We appreciate yeah, it. And that. you're one too. Yes, thank beautiful. You. you are so beautiful. Yeah. Yes, and knowledgeable. Thank you. You know, as they used to say, not just a pretty face, but you got a yeah. whole bunch well, of stuff up there. That's very important. That's yeah. very important. Beauty and brains. Please tell that's that to the that. young girls, that that is so important to be informed, intelligent, intellectual, And smart. do your research. And do your because work. Because that's one yes. of the things that, I, yes. that I'm very impressed about. Yes. When Roger. I sit with you, I know you have done your homework. You know your homework, yes, yeah. yes. Thank you. Yes, You're welcome. very much. So, so I'll see you both, and um, to Mother Fletcher and Uncle Red, um, they their their wings are set. You know, Absolutely. we want them around for another fifty years. At least, oh, now she's gonna add fifty. Fifty. Woo. <laughs> wow, this is gonna be big. Their wings Thank are you so set. much. Thank you. It's a wrap. <laughs> she's, we have to get her a director's chair. We do. Yes, I because love she's lovely to say, it's a wrap. We do. You know? So we that's do. her tea diplomat, because she's really trying to say, I'm done, I'm tired, yeah. let's go, we're finished. But in your that's language, what that but in our it's, language, a wrap. it's a wrap. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another exhilarating episode of Diplomatic License right here on City TV. We've been learning about the wonderful voyage that mother Viola Fletcher and her brother Uncle Red, two survivors of the Tulsa massacre, the Black Wall Street massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma, are doing here in Ghana. And it's, it's an honor to have them. They've got colors bestowed upon them. There's a chief and a queen mother now. You know, of course, I've been speaking to Dr. Erica Bennett, Ambassador Dr. Erica Bennett, who is the ambassador of the Diaspora Africa Forum here in Accra. And of course, her sister, my new mother, Dr. <laughs> Tony Luck. She's the COO of Our Black Truth. And please do check it out. There's something there for all of us. And I think that's something that each and every one of us should take as important and jump right on. My name is Apioko. I'll see you next week.